ours, and he happens to be a show dog. We compete in the Winchester Dog Dancing Competition every year. Which word didn't you understand? And when they do, I am going to do everything in my power to help make sure that you stay in jail. I miss her too. Just don't you dare. Clarns tend to only look at the financial side of companies under their control. I would be lying if I said that I approved of what we just did to the Flacco company. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Hollywood Interviews. I'm here with Meredith Thomas. And uh, how are you doing today? I'm well. I'm well. What is it? It's a Thursday. <laughs> are we? Are we doing not? Do we not talk about what day it is? Sorry. I'm uh, well. <laughs> no, it's it's fine. It's fine. Um, yeah, these come out on Mondays, so we're recording okay, on Thursday. So we can. Um, all right, we can start that over. I don't know how much you edit, but uh, no, it's fine. You know, I like to keep it all in. I, it's 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 Monday it's motivation, y'all. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Getting ready. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, awesome. Um, so I want to start. I, I basically was going to ask a couple questions, pick your brain here uh, about the industry. Okay. Um, so where did you get, how did you get your start in, in the film industry or the industry in general? Uh, so I, I got my start acting in elementary school. Um, so fifth grade was when I, I remember for sure getting the bug. I long before, um, Every, anybody called them vision boards. I remember really clearly in fifth grade making this collage and I had pulled like a spotlight out of a magazine. And I, at that time, I, I think I wanted to be a singer more so than an actress, but it, it, it shifted that. So fifth grade, the summer before sixth grade, I got my first professional show. I played Tessie in a summer stock production of Annie in New Hampshire. And pretty much that was it for me. The rest of my focus um, was about becoming an actress. Awesome. Yeah, it just takes <laughs> that one that one time and, and mm -hmm. get the bug. Um, oh, I, I definitely know how that goes. Um, so, so from there, okay, so your first feature that you were in was Pleasantville, right? That's right, yes. What, what was it like getting the call for that? Well, first of all, I didn't... I had no idea. I don't think I had any idea who I'd be working with. So I knew that they needed girls that could play high school. Um, and then I've always kind of, I'd always been told I had this really um, kind of ageless that I would, ageless face that it would look, uh, not ageless in years, ageless in time that, that I could do period pieces really well. So I just feel like I just, fell right into that look um, and that feeling. So it was amazing. So I didn't know that I, I was never on camera with, with Don Knotts, but at the time I didn't know Don Knotts was gonna be in it. Um, uh, Joan Allen was in it. Um, it, it was just an amazing thing. So for me, it was just a dream. I would drive to the canyons of Malibu um, and then each day I'd go, oh, do I take the beach way or I'm going to I'm going to take the canyon way. And so it either was driving up the coast or I was going over these gorgeous canyons. And it was I couldn't believe my good fortune. And then I would sit in a chair and get all 50 up and have the perfect 50s wardrobe and then walk around this perfect 50s town that they had built um in the hills of Malibu. And it was just like, are, are you kidding me? It could it was such a it was such a dream experience. And um, I didn't know that that was Gary Ross's first feature that he was directing or any of that. Yeah. I mean, I was just, you know, and, and a lot of people came out of that. Like I didn't even, it wasn't until years later when, um, who was the gentleman from Fast and the Furious who passed away? Oh, Paul um, Walker. Paul, yeah. And then yeah. I it, so years later I saw how, a lot of people had gotten their start in um, in that film, but to me, it was just like I got paid to play dress up and and dream <laughs> and <laughs> Males of yeah. Malibu. It was so amazing. Um, my mother had recently whipped out this picture. I, I was home visiting her, and um, she whipped it out and showed my aunt and uncles, and she was just like, "Look at that baby face!" And I look at it too, and I was, I can't believe I was ever that young and innocent look <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh wow 
Um, yeah, a lot of people got their start on that. And uh, yeah, it was Gary's first uh, directing uh, debut and he's gone on to direct some amazing things. He's also an amazing writer. So that, that's right, really right. cool that you got to work with him. Oh, that's awesome. Um, did, do you have any stories? Was he good to work with or? He was, he was, he was good to work with, but he, I, in hindsight, I, I realized like it makes sense that that was his first directing because we did a lot of takes to get <laughs> things perfect. Oh, yeah. um, and I'm sure that, and I, th I think coming off his success as a writer, I'm sure there was a lot of needing to really be amazing at have the film be amazing. And, and so I remember like there were times when I was just like counting takes and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe you know, that we're doing it again. Um, but heck, it was it was amazing, and and um, Joan Allen is such a fine actress. Like to oh, be yeah. up close and watch her work, it's just it was again um, such a, a dream. And I felt like I felt like it didn't get the attention it deserved. I feel um, I know that some people have been talking about it again. Um, because of you know shows that have come out that are kind of similar and that they travel back in time but I feel like it was it's strange to say that it was kind of ahead of its time even though it was about you know uh, yeah. the, the the color colorization of the 50s or the colorism or the, and the racism in the 50s um it really felt ahead of its time like I wish it was almost um I wish they would almost do like a huge re-release of it and see what today's audiences would think of it. Oh, that'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they did. I think they re re just re-released it on uh, Amazon Prime um, and it's always in the uh, recommended. So uh, there's somewhat of a re-release. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, that was a phenomenal film. Um, so after that, um, when did you get into the lifetimes and the hallmark and um the that oh, yeah. so i cre i credit a christmas in vermont with chevy chase as the beginning of my television movie career um that and it all it all started there and again i not to be like oh all my drop jobs are dream jobs because they are not yeah. <laughs> some of them are nightmares and some of them i say to myself you're not gonna die on a b movie in the bahamas not this is not how you go down you know go home but for the most part like there's some jobs that just like i how can this keep getting better i can't believe it so so um so the a Christmas in Vermont, when I came on, I knew that they were looking for some sort of a name um, to play the character that Chevy ended up playing. Uh, but when I came on, that that had that person hadn't been cast yet. So, and that shot in Buffalo, New York. And so I I knew I was gonna do the role, but then a, a, a snowstorm came in. And I got the call from casting saying, okay, you, know, you, you literally need to get on a flight tonight because we're moving your scenes because there's a huge storm coming in and we're not going to be able to shoot. So I like, can you do this? And I think I had my brother in town and, and I was like, I can, I, I can do it. I, I um, and so went, it was originally like a nice smaller supporting role, but as Chevy, when Chevy came on, they needed, they wanted more of Chevy in the movie, of course. And yeah. so, because I was a business person and I could tie the story a little more to Chevy, they were just like, oh, hey, can you, um, first it was like, can you stay and be um, Abigail Hawk's uh, photo double from behind? Cause she needs to go back to Blue Bloods. And I'm like, okay, so you want me to stay and read lines with Chevy Chase? okay i'll do that. like i was like yes yeah. yes i would like to do and then and then i said yes to that because like life is just a whole yes and yes and, okay yes i'll do that yeah. right and so i said yes to that and then they said you know what we're gonna have you be chevy's date to the final scene the christmas party because they needed more chevy so let's tie chevy in. so it, like let's have this office person that works with chevy and i was like yes okay <laughs> i will do that and then 
as it worked out, Chevy got uh, food poisoning and couldn't make it to Buffalo. So then we had to shoot Chevy scenes back in LA. So now we're back in LA and I guess they were like, oh, we need to tie this even more. And then suddenly I get new pages and I'm doing a scene um, in which you know, another scene and then Chevy's daughter ends up being the waitress in that scene. And I was just like, this, I mean, this small little, you know, supporting role that I went to Buffalo to play has just turned out to be this ridiculous thing. I mean, I'm sitting there, sitting there with Chevy Chase, listening to him tell stories about, you know, a Christmas, you know, the first, the first, not Christmas vacation movie, the first vacation movie. You oh, know, yeah. and, I'm, and I'm like, oh my God, did he just mention the Grand Canyon scene? Because that's the scene <laughs> that I just like can't get out of my head. Um, <laughs> so anyway, so it was that, I mean, what a great beginning, right? So oh, yeah. it's a Christmas movie. Chevy Chase comes on, my role gets expanded. And then from there, um, because I was cast in that, that opened the doors with that particular production company. And so then from there, I did another Christmas, the same director, Fred Olin Ray. I did another great Christmas movie. I did a uh, Christmas in Royal Fashion. Um, and, and from there, from that production company. So honestly, I have to thank the person that took the, you know, that believed in me, had worked with me before, put me in the movie prior to Chevy being involved. And then from there, people saw my work and that became um, hybrid who I do all the wrong movies with. That was, that's, oh, yes, yeah. that, that, that whole ball got rolling from there. And then once I'd worked with a couple of the people that are kind of regular names, I, I believe they look at someone and they go, oh yeah, Meredith, you know, got tied up by that kid in this movie. Let's have her be the mom in, of the one in this movie, you know? So I really believe that, you know, it's just this kind of like family tree now, like, oh, cause you know, because <laughs> uh, like I've worked with Travis Burns, he tied me up in the wrong boy next door, and then he was the love interest, and I was like the mother of the bride in a movie, you know, Hallmark movie, and there's there he is again. So I believe that it's just, um, you know, tying it all together, and um, so it's been a heck. It's it's a heck of a lot of fun <laughs> oh, yeah. to, to do these. I, I got to play my first villain. Um, it came out. The first villain on a Lifetime movie, I mean, and she was bad, and it, I had so much fun. It's called uh, Killer Advice. Um, Jared Cohn, I worked with him on a, as a supporting role in another Lifetime movie called uh, Evil Nanny, and then midst of the pandemic, he's like, I got this role, and I'm like, again, yep, yes, <laughs> I know there's a worldwide pandemic, Yes, I would love to be running around with a knife. Yeah, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh wow. Um, yeah, yeah, you, uh, yeah, you get cast as the mother a lot. Um, so yeah, that's. That's awesome. I, I, I joke. I said, you know, I've moved it. I went. I jumped from, right from always the bridesmaid, never the bride to always the mother of the bride. Like, I'm like, oh. okay, fine, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not a mom either, but I mean, I've played, I've, I've been, I'm, I'm not married, I'm not a mom, but I've had a heck of a lot of Hollywood husbands and children. So, I, <laughs> and I get to send them back at the end of the day. <laughs> that's, that's, that's true, actually. <laughs> and with the husbands. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> oh, but. Okay, so you um, you do a lot of comedy and a lot of drama. What is uh, what's your process to get into those kinds of roles? Because I mean, if you're they're, they're two completely different uh, roles, you know, you got comedy and drama. How do you? What's the process there? Well, I think with comedy, it's it's a heightened. It's it's just a heightened reality. I think. I mean, you. I kind of come from this place. If you believe, they believe. I have to so fully believe that I am in that crazy situation and and kind of heighten my response to it because and it's not even as heightened like if, if you are if that crazy thing is happening how would you respond to it and so um so 
it's all about telling the truth. It's just sometimes that the situation is so heightened that your truth is is heightened and um, your reaction is a little bit more heightened, but you still want to be telling the truth of that situation. So, and then sometimes you just have to suspend your disbelief. And especially with some of the, the drama stuff, you know, I was joking, you know, in, in, in a thing called Air Collision, where I played a thing, a movie called Air Collision, where I played uh, the first lady, I, I hung out of a plane at 30,000 feet. And then I had, then I went, then I lived and got back in the plane and played a scene with the, my husband, the president. And so, you know, <laughs> so you've got to somehow find a way to just go, okay, you know, and I remember going, can I lose an earring? Can my sweater at least be hanging off of me? You know, can I have be somewhat disheveled before I now, you know, play, like I have to not, I have to believe that somehow I lived through that and not convince myself that there's no way I could have lived through that. Because you can't get through the scene if you you can't suspend your disbelief yeah, for a minute. So, um, so yeah, I, I, most of what I do takes a fair, fair, fair amount of imagination. Um, because obviously, I'm not a mom, but I know what it is to love a, a child. I know what it is to to, to be concerned and want to support and protect people that you love. And, um, and then with some of the more, you know, the crazier things, you have to have a, a, a strong enough imagination to know that someone would be in this amount of anger, this amount of pain, this amount of frustration that they would do some, make some choices that to the rest of the world are pretty awful choices, but can you find a way to imagine as a human being in that situation and then just try to tell the truth of how how you would do it <laughs> how, how you would yeah. react to that insane situation so i think imagination um comes into play in my acting a lot more than um than anything else because i'm do some of the times i'm approaching things that i have no experience with um so but then sometimes i'm just like okay what would what would someone I respect, how would they do this scene? Like, how would they meet this challenge in this scene? Like I think of some, and I do that in life too. I'm like, okay, how would someone that I really, really respect, what choices would they make right now? Like, I don't even need to ask for advice when I'm just like, yeah, that's pro, you know, like, I don't think that the Rev would make that choice, Meredith. So you probably gotta <laughs> make a different one. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, um, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, everybody has different processes getting into mm -hmm. roles. So it's just kind of unique to hear what everybody does, because it's all not the same, even memorizing lines, uh, like nobody does it the same way. Um, I was talking to Mark Christopher Lawrence yesterday, and he, uh, uh, he highlights his his lines. And that's how he memorizes them. And like me, when I get a role, um, I, I'm weird. I have to actually record myself saying the words and then play it back to myself. And that's how I memorize. And that's my process. So I do that too. I, I listen. I, I mean, I, 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 I spend time on the script and I still do old school highlighting and all that. But I do have to, once I've gotten enough of it, the repetition really helps me. Just getting it, um, just hearing myself and doing it over and over. Yeah, it's, that's that's definitely my process. It's actually the only way I can do it. I can't. I've never been able to do the highlighter thing. I, I it's that's it's, so funny. It's, it's I've <laughs> never been able to do. It. it Doesn't work for me. It does not work for me. Um. Uh. Yeah. So okay. So there's two things that I really really enjoy in this world, and that's food and movies. So I always ask my guests, "What's your mm -hmm. favorite restaurant and what's your favorite movie?" So I have to tell the truth. Of course, I, I watched Gerald's the other day and I was like, I, and I should have been more prepared because I watched Gerald Webb's interview, Gerald, my producing partner and, you know, longtime collaborator for projects. And he, so I was like, oh, wow. Um, so that is, I've got this. So my, my favorite movie is this weird, weird escape is a movie that I have had since I was a kid. And it just, makes me laugh and I used to watch it on VHS with my mom and it's the original Overboard. It's uh -huh. just 
I, I, as far as comedies go, I just loved that as a kid. And I still, um, I still, it's just one of those films that can change my mood. Um, yeah, Goldie, yeah. Goldie Hawn is so great in it. It just, it's just, it's just good, good comedy and the romantic comedy love story. And, um, and so that, not, not too profound there. Um, and then as far as food, I always say I'm an aspiring vegan. Um, I, you know, I, I, I'm aspiring like one day when it's the set is totally mine, I'll, I'll make everybody eat that way. And if they don't like it, they, they can have another job. Uh, but, <laughs> so, but, um, so, um, I just pretty much, what do I love? There's a place called veg table, um, on Ventura Boulevard in uh, studio city. I think they probably, it's, um, and it's amazing. They have a Brussels sprout. I mean, it's like candied Brussels sprouts, really. It's so sweet with the balsamic, but it's so good. Um, I, there's a place called Sun Cafe that's just, that has this outdoor seating. Again, it's my friends just give me such a hard time. They're like, don't invite me to your birthday party and make me eat jicama nachos. Okay. And I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I actually have one of my very much meat eating friends. Like she likes Brussels sprouts now. And she like, it's, I'm totally to blame, but um, she's like, no jicama nachos, please. I'm like, it's my birthday, jicama nachos. Um, <laughs> so, um, but I love, so I love discovering new uh, vegan places, but I, I say aspiring because I did just go back East too. And I give myself some treats and I'm from New Hampshire. So I, every, once a year, or I skipped a year last year because of COVID, but I got to have a lobster roll. It cannot, I don't care where it is in New England that makes it as long as they don't put celery in it. Oh then yeah. I'm not, a, no. Oh, I'll eat every other vegetable on the planet. Do not put celery in anything I eat. <laughs> I can't do, well, that's not true. I can do celery if it's got like peanut butter or ranch, like something I can. Even that, like I, I love peanut butter so much that I don't keep it in my house, but I couldn't even <laughs> down celery with peanut butter. Oh, I could wow. eat peanut butter on anything. I mean, but, but so, no peanut, butter. so I have weird ones, cooked carrots, raisins, and celery. Mm -mm, nope. Like every other fruit and vegetable on the planet. Oh, oh you can't do cooked carrots. Oh, I love cooked carrots. <laughs> I could eat raw carrots for days. I mean, I, I, I literally turned orange in my twenties from drinking so much carrot juice and, um, and eating raw carrots that, I went, I, I, my blood, like the levels of my blood, like white blood cells were just ridiculously insane. And they're like, we're worried about you. And so I walk in, wa walk right into the doctor and he takes one look at me. He goes, you eat a lot of carrots, Meredith? And I was like, oh yeah. He's like, yeah, you need to stop. Oh, yeah. He's like, you have toxic levels of vitamin A in your system. I'm That's like, not something <laughs> usually your doctor say. <laughs> no, and, and, and. And I'm like, yeah, but my eyesight. And he's like, you could never eat another carrot again. And you'll be, your eyesight will be fine. Stop eating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Uh, you know, actually the last two sets I was on, and one of them was recently, they had, um, the way Craft Service set it up is one side uh, was completely vegan and the other side uh, was normal. And they would have like tofu and uh, like uh, different kinds of vegetables and stuff like that. So I think, I think the industry is kind of going that way a little bit. <laughs> They've definitely given people the option to. Yeah, it's kind of cool to know that it's not just in LA. We uh, we did all these um, because of COVID. All of the Emmy um, for your consideration Emmy events this year, pretty much all of them were drive drive-ins, which oh, was yeah. really cool. Oh, so cool! But you had. Um, you had the choice that it was, um, you know, vegan or not vegan. And it's nice. I mean, I, I know to some people, it's probably as, as, as an annoying as hell. I've seen the meme, like if someone is vegan and CrossFit, you know, which do they tell you first or something like that. It's just like, I know vegans are all like, I'm vegan. You know, I try not to be a pain in the ass. Like that's my simple rule. Like I try not to be a pain in the ass. I've actually, like when they say, you know, your, what are your food restrictions? I always, I'm always like, well, I am vegan. And they're like, oh no, <laughs> totally fine. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um. I, 
tried vegan for a little bit uh for like two weeks <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and i uh I don't know why. I just uh, I love meat. It's uh, but I, you know, I see. I want to be vegan for the health reasons for sure. Right. Um, but maybe one day I'll get there. So. Yeah. <laughs> when you come to my set, you won't even know you're not eating meat. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, all right. This has been a complete blast. I've enjoyed talking with you. Um, you know, let uh, let the audience know what you what do you got going on. What are you working on now? Well, I always, luckily, I always seem to have another lifetime project coming out. Sometimes I'm surprised by when they come out. What happens is I'll, I'll have, there'll be a working title. And then suddenly I'm like, oh, I'm on lifetime on, on Sunday because what was called this is called this. And okay, great. Um, so the working title on a couple of, of awesome ones that I've come out, hopefully they're going to be awesome. I, I love the directors on both of these. So I have one that I'm going to do ADR on a Monday, which means that it should be coming out pretty soon. And it's called, right now it's called Broken Mother. And I play the biggest pain in the butt mother-in-law <laughs> ever. Like it's so fun. I am the biggest busybody know-it-all mother-in-law. It was super fun to play. Um, and then I have another one coming out and I know this is the title, um, Killer Profile. And I'm the drugged up mother of the villain in that. Um, so people have given, people that saw um, Killer Advice have been like, when are you gonna play a villain again? So both of these, you kind of don't know. Like you, if you, you'll start out being like, "Ooh, maybe she's going to be a, a bad girl in this one." So you you, you kind of don't know the direction these women are going to take in these next two. So you'll have to watch to see if I'm full on villain or if I redeem myself, or if worse yet, I die. Which I've been usually usually if I'm the know it all or I ask too many questions in a movie. Um, you could put, you're probably going to see my dis demise halfway or three quarters of the way through, but, uh, oh. so, and obviously I can't tell people, Oh, go ahead and shut it off. And, you know, 45 minutes in. <laughs> oh, wow. You know, this is going to sound real weird. The one thing I've never gotten to do on anything is die on any, really? I, 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 yeah, it's kind of weird. I kind of want, I want, I want to do it. <laughs> I think I started, I think I must have like, I started dying early on because in sixth grade, I, sixth grade, I played Nancy in Oliver and, you know, Fagan kills her. Yeah. And so I remember at St. Joseph's like lying there with my feet hanging out. And I think I must've gotten a taste for that. So uh, that was my first time being murdered. And I, in lifetime, you, 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 you haven't lived until you've been strangled, from, you know, been with a cord from the back seat, you know, yep. that's the kill. I think I've been stabbed uh, a couple of times, maybe only a couple of times now, but I've had the strangle from the back seat and most recent, um, a couple of stabs. <laughs> oh, that's... If you see the butcher block people on the kitchen, yeah. You, you probably like you should you may know what's coming i never know what's coming as a character but the, the audience will <laughs> oh <laughs> oh that's great <laughs> yeah <laughs> well this has been a ton of fun i hope we get to talk uh, again sometime soon absolutely so Thanks. all right y'all check her out uh she's got a couple movies coming out on lifetime and we will see y'all next time thanks so much dustin no problem thank you <laughs> bye